اسمي ابو معرقه بن طراوي من الحيز من هنا عجب الطلبه عموما الحيز فيها 5000 حوالي 5000 يعني ناس يعني مش ناس برضه يعني على الفطره مش زي تحت في القاهره والحدد لا انا لسه ناس غلبانه و... فطبعا ما فيش لا حكومه تسمع ولا حد ولا محافظه ولا ما حدش بيسمع لنا خالص الميه كلها عندنا مشاكل الحكومه ما عامله بيها بس بيننا وبين البير برضه حوالي كيلو مش واصل لنا ميه وحتى لو وصل ما نقدرش نشرب منها مية حديد على طول مية حمراء زي الدم يعني لو حاجة بيضة لو في غيار بيضة تحط في المية تلاقيه لونه على طول بقى أصفر أحمر فما ما ينفعش يشرب منها That's a phenomenon in the Western Desert in general the subsoil water is, has a very high iron content they used to have a water filtration system, but it only worked for a few months, and uh, because of lack of maintenance and the, the amount of iron in the uh, groundwater here in, uh, in the village, the, the, the filters broke down. الميه النظيفه This system the, the old system required for you to add chlorine and permanganate so you needed to buy uh, stuff from Cairo so we decided to start uh, to try and introduce something a solution for that and we found a German company working on a solution that's a, a new technology My name is Tina Jaskolski. I work as research coordinator at the Research Institute for Sustainable Environment at AUC. Um, I've been working here in El Hez only for a few months now, but uh, in the Western Desert for more than seven years. And, uh, last year I met uh, Omar and uh, we applied for a grant together and this is when we got the, the money from the HSBC bank, which was 1.4 million Egyptian pounds to uh, work uh, on a, a series of water projects. We found out about Alex and Philip, uh, who, who are running a company called Autacon in Germany, and we thought it, would, it was a perfect uh, approach to solve the problems that we have here with maintenance and you know long-term dealing with pipes. So finally, we brought them here. So this week, Alex and Philip are with us, and they're actually physically installing the system themselves. And then we've also been helped a lot by locals. So they've been quite excited, and they've been helping us a lot in like building the room and getting the place ready. We are interested in the local people, that they are able to maintain it and to have a look what's happening. So our main goal is to develop solutions for developing areas where no electricity or a lot of technical educated um, personnel is available. That's why we have um, sustainable solutions which everybody can handle with and which are supplied by renewable energies. The maintenance the system needs is very easy and can be done by everybody and the only things you need is a tea brush and lemon juice or vinegar and that's it. The technology we are applying is actually using the natural salt content of the water. When you talk about water you most often also talk about mineral water so there are some minerals in the water and we are using solar energy to transform a certain mineral which is chloride to chlorine gas. So we produce the chlorine actually from, from the water itself. We, we will just help the water to disinfect itself. And as we control this process quite closely, we always add the right quantity of chlorine to the water so we can be sure that it stays safe when the people transport it and when the people consume it. About 100,000 pounds each, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is more expensive than the the local Egyptian option um, that we had, which is like the one where you have to exchange all the filters. 
twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in the long run, I mean, we just thought in the long run it was just a much more sustainable option. Here in Elysee also run into the issue where you just don't have electricity. Uh, you only have electricity three and a half hours per day. The system needs a lot more. So the solar energy option is perfect for here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot more than we had budgeted initially. And the initial investment cost seems to be quite high, but if all the water the system produces can be sold at this half a pound per 20 liters, it would still be a money-making machine, right? Mm -hmm. It would pay off very quickly, and after maybe a year and a half, it would just produce money. So the idea is that we will be selling the water, so people will be paying for it. But it's going to be very affordable, something like half a pound, maximum one pound per 20 liters. Um, we'll be having one or two locals working at the station and operating it. So they'd be you know, opening the tab, selling the, the water to the people. Uh, they'd be responsible for other maintenance, for cleaning the system, for making sure everything is on track. And whatever we make on the station in terms of you know, people paying for the water, this will be used for, for paying for any maintenance costs that we'll have and for paying those guys responsible for running the station, like giving them a very small salary. We see that all the final installation, like, like the taps, they're all well done. And the people, uh, we checked again if they can remember still how to maintain the system. They've done it perfectly. And yeah, it's very successful and we're very proud to the people that they um, like it and use it. I'm actually surprised uh, how much information, how much experience is here in the, in the government system. And, uh, but it's never enough and it's important that they become aware that they can learn from the farmers, from the rural community and only if they want changes and, and sustainable changes only uh, together with them and not, not imposing something on them that, that never works. Farmers are regarded as stupid all over the world and, and uh, well, they feed all of you. <laughs> On a local scale, you can uh, do something tangible in a pretty short while, but, but of course, if uh, higher you, you go up in the hierarchy, the, the longer it takes so to reach uh, and uh, wide and, and, and down also on the local level. It takes a while, you don't change the world in, in a single day.